you talk of fame and happiness and of some brilliant, interesting life. But for me, all of these pretty words, if I may say so, are like marmalade, which I never eat. You're very young and uh, very kind, but I don't know what is so delightful about my life. You've, you've heard of obsessions, of, of a man haunted day and night by, say, the idea of the moon or something. Well, I've got my moon. Day and night, I am obsessed with the same persistent thought that I must write. I must write. I must write. No sooner have I finished one story than I'm, than I'm somehow compelled to write another. And a third, after a third, then a fourth, I write without stopping, except to change horses like, like a post chase. I, I have no choice. What, what kind of life is that? I, I would love to know. It's a dog's life, that's what it is. Here I am, excited and delighted that I'm talking to you, but never for a moment do I forget that an unfinished story is waiting for me indoors. When I see a cloud in the shape of a, of a grand piano, I think I must mention somewhere the cloud went by in the shape of a grand piano. I smell heliotrope. I say to myself, sickly smell, morning shade. These must be mentioned when describing a summer's evening. I. I lie and wait for phrases, for words that fall from, from my lips or, or yours. And I hasten to lock them away, these phrases and words, in, in my literary storeroom. When, when I finish a piece of work, I fly to the theater or go fishing in hopes of escaping myself, of, of forgetting myself. But no, a new subject is already turning, like, like a heavy iron ball in my brain. I'm compelled by some, some force to continue writing and writing and so on, forever and ever. I can't escape myself.